Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So tonight we got a little uh, weeknight short. Uh, this is a special one for Adam Booth. And um, he noticed the uh, uh, float lock drill press vise that I got the other day at the, uh, the big epic tool sale. Um, and he has a couple of these, I guess, or one or two of them. And he wasn't, uh, he wasn't clear on how they're used. So what I thought we'd do tonight is just uh, set one up on the drill press over there and uh, do a little demo with it. Um, so uh, Adam can uh, get his all cleaned up and get it in working order. It's a pretty handy little tool um, for clamping stuff on the, uh, on the drill press. Um, I think <laughs> almost everybody has a, uh, a horror story on a drill press. Uh, I know I got quite a few uh, drill press stories. Um, um, some guys that I've seen, and uh, I got some of my own too. So uh, uh, anyway, maybe we'll get uh, get one of them stories in there too. So uh, let's uh, put an apron on and let's pop over to the drill press and uh, take a look at this float lock vise. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the float lock vise. Let me uh, take it off here. We'll kind of put it all back together. So this is the clamp bit here, and it fits in the T-slot um, on the table. And I, I think I know why uh, this didn't get used. Um, for whatever reason, in their infinite uh, wisdom, uh, or I don't know what, um, Floatlock as a company, they put a fine thread on this. And um, your standard... Uh, Joe McGee uh, T-nuts that you can buy all day long are half 13. Well, this is half 20. So you got a fine thread, you got a coarse thread. So if you want to put it on this drill press, okay, you got two choices. You can make a T-nut, which is what I did. And I didn't show that on camera because, you know, T-nuts are pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Or I got to drill and tap a hole in my machine, which a lot of guys would be kind of upset about doing that. So Right there is this, this kind of minor roadblock to using this thing. So say you order it, it shows up, and you go, oh, dang it, uh, okay, shoot. And then you set it aside or whatever, or uh, uh, you make a phone call, or you start looking for fine thread T-nuts, I don't know what, and it gets set aside and it doesn't get used. Um, and I think that's what happened with this one because think this one was ever used. It's brand new. It doesn't have a mark in it. It was just all scudged up um, with weasel snot. <laughs> but I cleaned it up a little bit and uh, and now it now it behaves. And you can hear the you can hear the ratchet and that's these teeth in here. So anyway let's uh, let's plop this thing back together here and get it on the uh, on the machine. Get rid of my coarse thread T-nut. No. It's too low. Oh, come on. So my T-nut is uh, camera shy here. Didn't I just pull this out of the front here or what? Alright. Plan B there. I don't know what's up with that, huh? Oh, there's a chip in there. That's what's going on. Okay. All right. So now uh, you got the uh, the stabilizer on there. Let's feed that through. Okay. And now we can run that down. Okay, and when I crank this down, it cinches this down. But let's leave it loose for a sec. And uh, so what we'll do is we got a we got a victim here. All right, get that up. And then we'll it's got a this end is threaded. Hold that down. Let's put a little uh, let's put a little gronk on that. All right, so now. Now um, we're free to float around, so we're just going to simulate drilling a hole here. Let's say that's our center punch mark. We're going to come down like that. 
And I'll give that a little, a little snug. All right. And there we go. Okay, and now we can, we can take that out and we can put another one in if we have another one. Okay. Or, you know, if you got a bigger piece, and I think I gotta loosen it, we can open this up. And this thing will hold. That's a pretty good sized piece there, right? You know, you can put a good plate in there. So like I said, everybody's got a, uh, you know, a drill press horror story, right? And um, my, uh, well, actually, let me change the camera around a little bit and you guys can see this from a different angle. And then I'll, uh, I'll tell my little drill press story. All right, so let's just do another, uh, another, Another demo there. Whoa. All right, didn't catch, did it? Come on, Mr. Wizard. There we go. All right, now we got it. And this thing's got a pretty good range on the thread, so no worries there. that down then we're free to float around here like this pick up our center punch mark theoretically right then we give that a snug and then we're all uh, we're all happy there so um, anyway uh, my drill press story is uh, um, I uh, was working with a um, they were uh, bottle guides for a, a filling machine and these are uh, made out of plastic and they um, um, you know what I might have told this story actually you know what I think I told this story let me uh, I got a different drill press story so I think I told the uh, the drill press story about uh, sucking a countersink all the way through the part that I made so uh, I'm gonna tell a different drill press story and to do that I need to I need to back the camera up a little bit Okay, so the, uh, the, the other drill press story I was going to tell is uh, I worked with a guy and there was a big drill press in the shop. It was bigger than this one. It had a, uh, uh, I believe it was a 20-inch a throat, I want to say. And this one is a, uh, this is a 10-inch throat. So it was, it was bigger than this one. It was quite a bit bigger than this one. Uh, I think it was a closing. I don't, oh, yeah, it was a closing, I think, like this, or a Powermatic. I don't quite remember which. Anyway, this guy, uh, his name was Ray. Uh, I'm not going to say his last name because he might be watching. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, Ray was drilling a piece of stainless flat bar. And um, so he, <laughs> you know, the classic, right? He made it through with the pilot drill, the smaller drill, which is generally pretty easy to do when you're going through blank material, right? But where he got in trouble was when he went back with a slightly larger drill, okay? Um, so what happens is you already got a hole through and your feed pressure leaves a little membrane in the bottom, right? Well, what happened was, you know, he just came up and put it on top of the vise uh, that was there instead of clamping it in the vise, right? You know, and he's drilling away, right? Well, the thing, it snagged as it broke through. And this was a big three-quarter inch or one inch uh, silver dimming drill. And it snagged this piece and pulled it out of his hand. He let go of it. Well, it started to, it started to spin around like this, this big flat bar, right? So we're on the other end of the shop, and we hear him go, oh! And, you know, we're looking down there, and, and we just about pee our pants watching him do this dance. So it had a, it had a forward and reverse uh, switch, so you could run it in reverse, so you could kind of... You could kind of tap with it too, which was kind of nice. So you could just do the do the tapping thing. Um, but anyway, he had this drum switch, right? And he's backed away from the machine, and the thing's spinning around, and he's he's trying to he's trying to time this thing to get in there and hit that switch. Well, he didn't quite get the timing right, and it took him about I don't know eight or ten tries to get in there and hit that switch. And like I said, we were on the other end of the shop and we just about busted a gut. And uh, so that's a, a little funny drill press story. But, uh, you know, like a lot of good stories, there's a, uh, there's a lesson there, right? You know, and I'll tell you what, 
uh, people get in trouble on drill presses because they just look so innocent and you can just hold on to this stuff and go and that's where you run into trouble. So uh, you want to clamp stuff down with a vice uh, like a float lock like this or something like what I did, which is this here. And you guys can now immediately see the, the family resemblance here, okay? So instead of a, a small vise like this, I've taken a curt vise, put a little slider on the bottom, and a bar that locks in the T-slot, much the same way this locks in there. So that's where I got the idea. I didn't invent it. Um, I give these guys the credit, or Heinrich, uh, they have a similar setup like this. And um, so, anyway, that's where that all came from. So. Adam, that's what the float lock does. That's how it works. Um, it's a pretty spiffy vise. You can hold round stuff. It's got built-in parallels. And, um, you know, it's pretty cool. So, I'm going to... Uh, I'm probably going to stick with my Kurt vise setup. And uh, this one, um, uh, we're going to offer this one to uh, Chuck Bomarito over at Outside Screwball. He, uh, he posted up a uh, drill press uh, story the, uh, the other day, so uh, he's coming out here this weekend. We'll see if he's interested in this thing, and uh, uh, we're going to make him a heck of a deal on it, okay? So, uh, Chuck, hope to see you on Sunday, and uh, this might be your, uh, your nice new vice here, buddy, okay? All right, see you guys later.